All right, I want to make a quick video right here. And I've done a video like this before, but maybe I didn't get it the way I should have in such a way. But on the way that I sharpen all of my carving tools, and basically, if you get you a good knife, like a Helvy or a Drake or a Jim Hahn knife or a Charles Simpson knife, or an OCCT knife, uh, Mike Shipley, whatever. Now, OCCT makes the Mike Shipley knife. I have never, when I have gotten a good carving knife, never, never sharpen that knife. Unless you drop it and break the blade or something like that, yeah, I understand it. I don't have to sharpen it. One of the big mistakes that beginners make is they buy these sharpeners or every time they go to carve or the knife does, they sharpen their knife on a whetstone. And I have no idea. I used to try to do that kind of stuff. And I found out that this was absolutely the worst thing in the world. Because every time you do that, you take off steel. And the carving knives that I use, and most people use, are very thin. And so you do not want to take any more steel off than necessary. Okay? Every once in a while, if you break a blade, do something like that, yes. Or if you're making a blade, yes. But when you are carving and you have a good knife, a very, very good knife, then you do, you, all you should have to do with that knife is simply to strop it. That's all. That's it. Now, this is a good knife. This is a healthy knife right here that someone gave me. And... All right, let me see. Let me show you. This is a heavy knife that I have here, right here. Okay, see the blade? See how thin it is? Now, I keep sharpening that, that thing. Every time I, I have to sharpen it, then all I'm going to do is I'm not going to have any steel left to it. So what do we do? We strop the knife. Now, I power strop. I have this machine right here. It's from Chipping Away. Let me go put this over here. And Chipping Away makes this. Now, this is a pricey machine, so I don't recommend it for everybody, all right? It is. It's a very pricey machine. So I do not recommend it for everyone. It's about $300, a little bit more than $300 now. This, this machine here, I've got probably, is at least 16, 17 years old. And it has, it has, I've had no problems with it whatsoever. But when I used to strop my knives, with a, I used to strop my knives, and, and the reason I'm having to do this, I don't have this set up right now on my bench because I, most of you know I lost my house in Harvey, so I'm working at, my, uh, at a garage at my mother's, and to be honest with you, this is a big mess over here. It's almost a shame to even show you. So I just used a, a, a bench here to kind of show you just a little bit. But I'll show you how my, I strop my knives. And I power strop them. Now, the blade, excuse me, the blade. This is a 42 inch uh, leather, one inch uh, strop. Okay? It's one inch is this way, and it's made out of leather. And, and the ones you get for chip, from chipping away, they last you forever. I mean, they've. I, I, they last last one I lasted me five six years, and the machine turns like this. Okay, it turns opposite of a bulk sander. All right, it turns uh, in the opposite direction, which is you know counterclockwise. We would say maybe. All right, now on this machine, all I have to do. And I said, I would used to sit there and power straw. And it would take me, oh, I'd have to just keep stropping and stropping them to get this thing sharp. These things, I can take a couple passes and I have got the sharpness on my knife. So I can just keep on carving and don't have to worry about it. So let me show you how I do this. All I do is I take my knife 
and you're going to lay, uh, you, I, I lay these nice flat on here, or just a little bevel, a little edge, very, most of them are just laid flat. Turn that machine on. Now, let me, let me say something before I go. You won't, don't ever, when you have a belt sander, it goes this way. Don't ever try to sharpen your knife down like this. Always want your knife for the direction to be going upward. Okay? Like this. And I stick my knife on there. And I come here. I stick my knife on there. And I just sharpen it like that. Okay? I just drop it like that. Turn it off. I'll put it on a little buffing wheel. Let me get a piece of basswood here. Here's a little piece of thin basswood right here. Okay. I'm sorry, this is so hard to show. I'm in this. I'm in this. See, here's a little piece of thin basswood. And we're going to cut it. And look at that. It's as sharp as can be. Look at that. Cuts like butter. That's what stropping will do. Now a lot of people are scared of power stropping because of the simple fact that uh, they're, they're afraid that, that if the blade, if the belt goes too fast, then it might burn my knife. And it will. If, if you're, you're doing it, it's going too fast, it can warm your knife up. But if you have an instant situation like that, keep one of your blade and keep your little cup of water and just dip the blade into the water and continue to straw. If it takes longer and longer, just do that because all you're doing is cooling it. So, but I've never had to do that because I only have to take just a few passes uh, on this straw for it to work, okay? So, you say to yourself, I don't have $300. Well, I can understand that. I can understand you don't have $300 because it's, uh, it is expensive. I'm not gonna say it's not expensive. Let me move that just a little bit. Okay, so this is a leather belt, and there are substitutes for this, much cheaper substitutes. Well, this would cost $300. We can get you into a power stropping, and I'm going to tell you something. Power stropping changed my whole perspective of stropping. Uh, it's just so easy now. And I can just go on carving. I don't have to worry about it and stuff like that. I, I know a lot of people don't like it. That's fine. I love it. I absolutely love it. But this machine is pricey. So like I said before, I want to go back and I want to show you a way that you can make a cheaper brand of this. And by using a 30 inch belt sander. This is actually 42 inch and the belt goes this way, it goes counterclockwise. So you'll have to make a few provisions on what I'm gonna show you, okay? All right, I'm gonna show you here. This is a Harbor Freight now, they make a lot of belt sanders, okay? They make a lot. They make uh, many of them. Uh, but that, that belt sander right there is a Harbor Freight belt sander for about 52, I think, 52 bucks. That's all. Okay? Now, let's look at this belt sander for a minute. And they are noisy. Uh, they're a little bit noisy. But, uh, you know, you turn it on like this and watch the direction of the belt now, right here. Now, the 
course, this is a sanding belt you put on here. Now, this is a one by 30 inch belt that fits on here, okay? Now, let me show you how you can turn this into a sharpening system with this type of belt. You can actually on Amazon or many places purchase a one by 30 inch sharpening leather belt. Okay, and this has already been used, but as you can see, it's just a leather belt. All right. Now let me show you here. Let's take this belt off of here. Just like that, showing you. This little thing, you have to readjust and kind of loosen this. This, this little knob back here loosens that pulley right there so you can kind of get this off of here. Okay? Alright, let me get it off of there. Alright. Now let's put this leather belt on here. It's not hard. Let's tighten this up just a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. And let's go ahead and put this cover back on. sometimes putting this cover back on is harder for me than a, of course that has a lot to do with my eyes. There we go. There we go. Now it snaps on. Sometimes it's hard for me to see so you people with good eyes y'all have very good eyes. Alright now let me show you this belt the way it works. Turning the wrong way as the other belt, as the other uh, scorpion. Okay? Okay, let me turn it off. Now, you don't ever want to try to sharpen your belt like this. Do not, I mean, scorp your belt. Your knife like this, okay? Now, look, I don't want any. Uh, I think I've explained myself about my videos. I don't want any problems with Harbor Freight stuff, okay? I don't buy a lot of Harbor Freight stuff. Uh, I have this one to show as an example, and uh, I, have, I have actually given some of these to people and they've been using them. This is, this is simply for convenience and cost. I paid 300, over $300 for that machine, okay? Now whether you think that's right or whatever, you want to stop it by hand, you go right ahead. But I like the power straw. So the machine is $52, the belt's about $30, so you're looking at $80, which is a whole lot less than $300. Okay? All right. And I, I really don't want to hear anything about Harbor Freight stuff. It's junk and all that other stuff. Yes, most of it is, a lot of it is junk, but in a case of convenience, this is going to work. I have had this Harbor Freight belt sander right here. For about five six years and it's worked fine really hadn't had any problems with it so we're not talking here about you know the best or anything like that i'm trying to save you a little money that maybe you can enjoy power stopping without spinning and breaking the bank with it that's why i do this okay all right now since the so no no comments about how terrible i shouldn't tell anybody about harbor freight okay just you can use when you can do this other stuff, okay? Um, if you want to spend, you know, it's like my bandsaw there. I spent $700, $800 for a Delta. 
You don't have to spend that much, but I spent that much because I wanted the quality. But on this situation, this is for people who are carving and would like to power strop and don't have, or on a budget and don't have the money, okay? All right, so let's just let it go with that. Since the belt turns downward, you don't want to ever try to sharpen your knife like this, okay? Because then your knife can slip, do whatever, but you just don't want to sharpen it like that. So, is an easy solution to that. Take the machine and turn it over like this. Okay? Now, a lot of people I have seen have actually done this and then braced this, uh, built a little thing and braced this on the side of their workbench where it's is completely like that. And not only that, but you can use the sander as well. You can sand things and all that other stuff, and it's no problem. But it's actually laying on its back. Now watch. When you when you do it, look at your blade now. It's running like it would be running upwards. Because it's on its back. Now this machine runs a little bit faster than the other machine does. So you may have to, uh, don't, 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 you know, make sure you feel your knife to make sure it's not getting too warm or whatever it is. But you shouldn't have to make that many passes anyway to make it sharp. Okay? So let's, let me take another knife here. And we're going to use the same type of, uh, this is another knife I made that I carved with. It's a homemade knife with an OCCT blade. And I made it because I like the handle. All right. On these knives, I lay them flat whenever I, I, I uh, strop them. Okay? I lay them flat. I don't have to get a big angle to them or anything like that. But if you have a knife like a, I think the Flex Cut, a lot of them, have sort of an angle on them. If you have to angle them, you typically take your blade and just tip it till it touches the the belt and do it like that. Okay? Now watch. Basswood that there you go. You see, the thing is, you have to just realize and understand is that you can accomplish the same thing with this as you do with a $300 machine. You just have to watch your blade. Now, as I feel my blade, my blade is just a little warm. That's all. It's just a little bit warm. But, like I said, all you got to do is keep it. Uh, if you got to strop quite a bit, keep a cup of water nearby and dip that knife into that water, dip that blade, just like you would do if, if, you're, if you're grinding something down. Same exact thing. And keep that, keep that uh, blade strop. And you can take your compound and... and as it's running, you stick your compound on here and you get your compound on your straw. Now, all I'm saying is this is just an easy way of doing it. I have known a lot of guys that have taken up this, have actually, they, they, they create something to uh, uh, secure it and the only reason this one's not secured is because I know eventually when I move back in my house and I don't want to have to move it or anything like that. So it's a cheaper machine, yes, but it will get the job done. And so, you know, I, I don't want to hear anything about 
how bad Harbor Freight is. I know they're not the most expensive things, but more than anything in the world, you can make you a cheap straw, power straw sharpener out of this, and it works great for carving knives. So I'm just telling you now, this is the way to go if you don't have the money and you can't afford a lot. So anyway, I think I've showed this video before, but I wanted to repeat it to kind of help people see it. And that's the way it's done. So God bless you now. And uh, this is just a little thing, $80 and 300 and a little over $300. And I bought that 16 years ago and it was $300. So it's probably more now. And it's been a wonderful, great machine from chipping away. But if I hadn't had the money, I would go with this way and do it. All right. Well, God bless you now. Just a small tip on how to uh, use your stuff. And uh, so keep carving. Be safe. And uh, just do the, the best you can. And God bless you now. All right. All right. God bless.